Welcome to the Fancy Live. Live, 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 live. I'm your host, Funky Joseph, featured contributor at FanBite.com, and I'm joined by Stephen Strong, managing senior managing editor at FanBite.com. That's me. Hello. Well, well, thank, thank you. you. I was, was going to welcome, welcome you, but though this is, well, not, not my room, room, also not your room. room. So <laughs> I don't know where, where to go with that. I was going to say I can see palm trees from where I'm sitting right now, which is not for me. I can see palm trees, I can see Paul, Tamayo. Yeah, yeah, palm trees. <laughs> palm trees. And I'm also joined by a very, very special guest, Lauren Shea, senior narrative editor at Riot Forge. How are you doing? Pretty good. It is a pretty good day. It is. It's nice out. Yeah. It's, it's been, been a nice week. week. It's, it's been, been very, very like chilly by LA standards, so it's just like literally perfect for me. Yeah. yeah. I dress, I dress like, like it was summer here. Yeah. Yeah. I just got t-shirts. I don't know. Okay, okay it's, it's been, been chilly. chilly. I have been very chilly, but I, I, I like it. It's, it's not, not as cold as this back home. I'm not sure. Yeah. Much warmer. God no. Yeah. So how how have you been up to? Sorry. What have you been up to today? Like, how's your day? Pretty good. Uh. I arrived here excited to see you folks. It was good to meet folks from Fanbyte because I used to work for the company that Fanbyte is part of. So I yeah. know mm-hmm. a bunch of people here and it's been great to see them again. It's been good to see John. You used to be my boss, kind of. I was I was in the org tree. <laughs> or, or, you know, I, I, don't, <laughs> right. I don't really know if I was your boss. I was a freelancer, so literally everybody was my boss. Yeah. Mm. According to 40% of the pitches that we still get, you still are our boss. Yeah. Oh, Lauren, I'm did you sorry. notice? <laughs> what? Did you know that like every email, oh, oh, most PR releases that we get that aren't from like PR people that we know all say, dear Laura. Oh my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> Still. I wasn't very good at that job. I'm sorry. You're so cursed with my ghost. <laughs> I'm, I'm shameful. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, <laughs> Thanks, Nikki. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I'm sorry. I put on my website, like, do not send me any PR <laughs> stuff. I no longer work in this field. Mm. And I still get, like, people's press releases about some, like, terrible consumer product oh, they invented yeah. that no one should ever use. And Oh, my God. It's um, the, always that. That and like, the new thing is everybody um, who sends those auto-generated PR blasts is uh, telling us about their brand new NFTs. Oh, um, that's yeah. awful. That's all great. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. I wasn't particularly good at that job. You folks are better at it than I am. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you, uh, you you deserve to be the ones with your name em- emblazoned uh, f- yeah. frustratingly on every NFT page. <laughs> oh yeah. my god! I got one email that was like, "Here's what gamers' fingers will look like in five years," and it was just like the longest fingers yeah. holding a controller. Freaky stuff. Um, Wait, are, did someone really send you that? Or are you? Just I'm like, serious. Well, oh, I can pull they're serious. I, we, I also got this. Why <laughs> do they think? will be longer. I don't know. I didn't read it. I just freaked me out. <laughs> it's like, oh, what, what if human fingers evolved to reach the triggers on in your Xbox five controller years. better? Yeah, like, in five years. Yeah, that's not even like Lamarckian evolution. That's like... No, that's, that's like, like freaky. You, you press a button too much and your finger gets... I don't know, man. I guess that's how it works. I mean, we got the email. It's yeah. gotta be true. It would be pretty cool if it worked that you, way. You jerk off too much, you go blind. You uh, <laughs> play video games too much, you your get long finger. Your fingers get really long. <laughs> I guess that's the science. But Laura, I know you used to work at this company, but you now work at Riot. How's that been? What, what kind of what's your day to day like? So I work at Riot Forge, which is uh, our indie game publishing division. So yeah. my job as the narrative editor there means that I'm mostly helping teams uh, learn about the world of Runeterra and write scripts and uh, you know nail character voices and I'm answering their uh, research questions about the world and all of our weird lore stuff yeah and uh doing research for them when they need it and stuff like that that is so exciting like I, i'm a huge league fan i know steven's played a bunch of leagues as yeah. well um so i i don't know that's so cool that you get to like teeter with all those things that you were telling me earlier that you helped out work on on yumi the character who's like oh a yeah cat, talking that was cat. before i worked on forge i did a little bit of editing on mm-hmm. uh, just one league character i did i edited yumi who was written by uh, my friend Rayla, who was Riot Gelbug at the time. Nice. Are you allowed to talk like at all about like like Riot Forge is the thing I think that gets talked about like a lot in general. Like that that phrase gets used a lot, but like what does Riot Forge actually like do day to day? Like can you like elucidate for people? Yeah, it's it's a uh, indie game publishing. Indie um, game publishing. So uh, we're working with studios that are, you know, in- interpreting our universe and our characters into uh, different art styles and genres and stuff mm. like that, mm-hmm. and. Uh, 
we're doing what a games publisher does for those teams. Wow, okay, Got that's it. wild. Yeah. And two recent games that came out were Hextech Mayhem and uh, Rune King, right? Yeah. D- did you do any work on those ones? Yeah, I was the script editor on both of those games, and I supported the writing teams and the creatives on those games to that is sick. Do, the, sick. do the story, <laughs> you know, so in many, whatever way uh, that means for each of those projects. So mm-hmm. many people at like Fanpipe recently, we, we keep like making the joke that's, God damn it, they found a way. They found a way to get us into it. They league-pilled us. Yeah. Now we're all playing Rune King. Like, we got codes for Rune King. It was like a surprise drop, and like... We were like, okay, we'll check out this this League of Legends RPG, and then me and Natalie, uh, and I think Funke as well, all played it. And was like, this is really good, yeah. and we're and I, like yeah, other Airship, folks were like, huh, really? Yeah, Airship knocked it out of the park. I, I've I've had a lot of fun playing Rune King as well. It's and, great, uh, it's great, great. I'm I'm gaining immense psychic energy from the fact that people are enjoying it. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's it it's one of the my like it's like that and Guardians of the Galaxy are kind of like my two biggest surprises of the year right now that I enjoyed them so much so far. I got to check out Guardians. I've heard some good things about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. How do you flesh out? Because yeah, I've been playing League for like years now, and I've played like Misfortune. I've played Braum. I've played Ilawi, and it's so weird. Like because they don't really have too much narrative other than their lines in the games and the, the comics as well but how do you i guess translate that over to like a completable indie yeah. rpg so there's um there's actually a lot of short stories about them as well so a lot mm-hmm. of these characters appear in uh, a couple of actually quite long short stories that are on the league universe website right so we actually do have a lot of media about them being in different types of situations and talking to other people and, you know, making decisions and doing cool stuff in comics and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So we actually do have a lot of, like, reference material that we're able to show people. Yeah. And uh, then they sort of filter that through their um, their unique artistic perspective. You know, and for Rune King, that was, you know, Joe Mad and the rest of the Airship Syndicate team. Mm-hmm. They have a, a, a bunch of interests that we want to you know, encourage, like, you know, the art style and, and the kind of things you emphasize or lean on in order to create, like, a certain vision of the character. Mm. Yeah. Um, so that's why everybody in uh, in Ruined King looks so cool and has so many muscles. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah Joe yeah. Mad got in there and just, like, ah, oh, just, just, like, pump him up. out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, we, we actually do have a lot of, like, reference material that we can offer people, which is cool, but then they have to go make the... Um, the jump to uh, a, a version of that character that sort of expresses their style and their interests and uh, the whole vibe of their project. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Do you get any like weird questions about the characters' personalities or like what they are like outside of the rift? Yeah. Sometimes uh, we'll have to think about what somebody would do in a situation that they've never been in before. If you think about the kind of dialogue that's in League of Legends, it's frequently like tactically useful information, mm-hmm. like I just yeah. killed a guy, I just used this ability, uh, I'm invisible now, I'm in this part of the map, I am walking from here to there. You know, it's, it's, uh, um, it's necessary to communicate the character's entire personality in the most concentrated way possible alongside like tactically relevant information. Yeah. yeah. So writing for League is super difficult. Oh um, my God, yeah. But it, uh, it requires you to communicate in a certain way mm-hmm. and so in more narrative focused projects like Ruin King they have to uh, speak in a very different way you know like more uh, contextualized by the things that are happening to them more driven by their goals or their you know f- fears or their needs or something and so mm-hmm. the way that they talk ends up being really different the kinds of things that they're likely to say or the topics they're likely to talk about are super different so we do encounter um, situations where folks kind of have to scratch your head and be like, what would, you know, what, what would, I don't, I don't know how far you've gotten in the game, but there's a situation where Alawi confesses something to Braum that she's like really worried about. Mm-hmm. And in League of Legends, people are not making like heartfelt confessions to no, one another. Not at all. So you've got a lot of uh, it, very cool new opportunities in a project like that to express the character's personality in a different and interesting way. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That kind of stuff is so cool because especially on Braum, like he was one of my mains for a couple of seasons and I, he's always about like protecting people and all that. And in Rune King, there's a whole plot line about him protecting his village and I feel like you don't really, I didn't know that from the game. Like I didn't know that he was known as such a figure in his village and like was helping everyone. And that really just like helped build up the character. So when I play League or Teamfight Tactics, I'm like, oh, like 
I, I, I'm looking at these characters with, with a different light, so I think that's really cool to see Riot actually being Riot Games, like multiple <laughs> games. I, and, and I know building out these experiences that are less just like competitive and about those interactions, like gameplay interactions with each other, and it's more about the story and, and who these characters actually are. I think that's really cool stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for, I'm, I'm excited that we had the opportunity to, you know, to, to, to tell an interactive story in this way, because that's, that's kind of like why I got into games. I wanted to be involved in game stories and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, it's a huge thrill to be able to work on this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. What, what do you feel like the future of, of League narratives will be? Because Arcane recently dropped and people are loving that. Um, seems like people are more open to like playing League more, th more so than they were like even a couple of years ago um, and like the whole world as well. Yeah, it's the cool thing about narrative is it gives you a, a wider variety of ways to, to enjoy those characters. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that a lot of the stuff we've got planned will be you know, enjoyable to folks in the same way. I think just, just having like something that's story focused opens the door for like a lot of people who um, would rather would would rather have that kind of entertainment in their life than yeah. than something that's a little bit more competitive. I mean, Natalie, um, one of my co-hosts on Ninety Nine Potions, which you can listen to on fanbyte.com slash podcasts, um, was on an episode with me talking about that, and she's like very story focused. Like that is why she's like way into this, and she also really loved Arcane. It was like if there's not an interesting story pulling her along, she just doesn't care. And this got her into League of Legends because, or like, again, Rune Terra, I guess, is the more, the more, the broader term now. Yeah. Yeah. The world of League. Yeah. The That's world of League. Rune Terra. The world that they live in. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a cool world. Like, it's genuinely, like, really interesting, as I've found, like, because, you know, so much of that stuff is just not explored. Like, th words like Hextech get thrown around in item descriptions and whatnot in League of Legends, but, like, you have no context for, like, what that means for, like, the greater geopolitical ramifications of that world. And now yeah. you get to see that. And then in Ruined King, especially, like, you get to see a different <laughs> side of the world in a lot of ways, because it's not, like, a major, major city in the big sense that, that you start off in. You're in Bilgewater, this kind of like pirate town and whatnot. And also, more games should have pirates in them. <laughs> true. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, it's definitely a vibe that I haven't seen in a lot of other turn-based RPGs, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this is like a deep one. Like, I, that was one of the things that shocked me so much about Rune King was like, oh, this is like a... This is not like a game that feels like it was designed to appeal to the widest possible audience because the League of Legends audience tends to be very big and broad and maybe not <clears throat> super uh, used to things like CRPGs, like Baldur's Gate and whatnot. And yet it's very deep. It's like very interesting mechanically as well. And a lot of the mechanics let those characters shine through like, the, like their personalities actually. It weaves into the fiction with Braum as being very defensive focused, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's really cool. I, I like the lane mechanic in, in that game because I, I didn't expect it to be so deep and fleshed out like that. Like it's taking lanes from League, but also like making it a turn-based time tactical element in the in this game. And I, I don't usually play too many games like that, but this one drew me in a lot. I think I think it was yeah, well crafted. Yeah, I, I also enjoyed the uh lane mechanic. It uh I, I'm I'm very glad that it gives me additional things to think about that I don't normally get to think about in a turn-based RPG. Right, and there's a fishing mini game, so you know it's a real uh, RPG. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you know, you wouldn't uh, have any indication. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. H have you been playing anything cool lately? Yeah, I uh, last night I started playing the Minecraft Caves and Cliffs update again. Yep. I turned my interesting. I turned my server on and I went into Discord and I said, "Hey everybody, let's play Minecraft again." <laughs> um, what Did else? You, have you been playing Minecraft for a long time? I feel like I know a bunch of people who just got into Minecraft during the pandemic. I bought Minecraft within the first like 30 days that it yeah. went on sale like mm. a decade ago. Yes, I am. Um, and in 2010, it was almost the only game I played. I played Minecraft and NetHack, and that was it. Those are, oh my God, yeah. that's what such a NetHack? Laura Bichet, like double whammy. It's like one of the most crusty, ancient, traditional roguelikes, you know. Mm. Um, it's like Rogue and NetHack. Like, okay. Those yeah. are the basis for everything that came later. Yeah, and that's why I like Caves of Cud so much, which is another game that I'm always playing. Uh, Caves of Cud is a, is, is a 
like net hack plus open world plus aesthetics you know like it, it's right. it's super good it's uh, very very creative mm. um i I don't know. I've, I've been revisiting a lot of things from the past. I reinstalled Skyrim and I put in a bunch yes. of Yes. Mm, I did the um, same thing. <laughs> What's your character then, like? Uh, I always play as a Khajiit because I like having free night vision. Oh, that's good. Um, yep. And I uh, uh, do a lot of sneaking and arrow shooting and uh, blasting people with magic. Mm. Do you use um, a lot of mods? Uh, yeah, this time around I've mostly been using like. Um, Mods that increase the visual fidelity of the game. Nice, and, yeah. And asset updates or whatever. I, on Nexus mods, there's just like if you sort by, like most downloads or something, the top yeah. like ten mods are just all focused on like making the game look really pretty. I did so, that this year. I, I got way into modding Bethesda games, so I played through all of Fallout Four finally with a ton of mods, and I hmm. tried to follow up with Skyrim and just like loaded that game to the gills. Hmm. And then of course immediately they announced like here's the new Skyrim edition that just comes with 500 mods built in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm using um, that ed- the anniversary edition that where they they, they released fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. So I've done again a, l- a real RPG now. <laughs> <laughs> they added fishing. I didn't even know that. Yeah, there's okay. like these little buckets of fish all around the world, and if you mm-hmm. go up to them, you can only fish where there's like a little fishing stand. Okay. Um, and there's just a super simple little fishing mini game, and mm. yeah, it, it was a mod because that's what this this new thing is. It's like a, it's the game plus like 500 of the mods that were like officially Bethesda sanctioned. So. Okay, they were like, this is a real one. Like, this yeah. one really We know this one it. works. <laughs> <laughs> True. I, uh, I'm really into alchemy in every Elder Scrolls game Ooh. because I love collecting resources mm. and crafting. Mm-hmm. And you can craft with all of the fish. So What? Uh, what do you I'm, make with the fish? I guess you're putting them in a potion. I guess you've got like herbs and then like an entire fish. Yeah, you're, you know? Gotta you're get putting, your omega-3 in with your stamina potion. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess we could say that, like, my character is processing the fish in some way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the idea that they've got, like, a bubbling cauldron of, like, herbs, and then they're just lowering, like, just a single fish, fish into it. Damn. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I remember, I f- before that, you had to just, like, look at the fish in the water and grab them, Grab right? them, yeah. Yeah. That was weird. I just imagined my character, like, just picking them up, like, I don't know. I Is like that possible? you have to you have to do that in like Subnautica too. Like you've got all this cool like undersea equipment, but you have to like run up and like grab the fish with they your hand. They don't have hand. a spear or something. No. no, you get a knife at some point, and eventually you can upgrade it to a heat knife that instantly cooks the fish when you kill it. Oh no, <laughs> it's very way. funny. Yeah. Do those exist in real life? Oh yeah, totally. Okay. I've got one in, back in my hotel room. If you oh, want to see it after this, yeah, a, yeah, for for lunch. Did you play Blow, Blow Zero? Yes, <sighs> I like that a lot. It was very good. Yeah. Speaking of story, I was like really impressed by how much like story they added to that one. Yeah. Um, about the heat knife. I think the heat knife is actually tactically disadvantageous because it oh. cooks the fish and then the fish starts going bad. Yeah, right? it can rot. Yeah. Hmm. So it actually decreases the amount of time that you can store the fish in your inventory. Mm-hmm. I thought about this a lot. Well, uh huh. <laughs> yeah, if you play in Sonatica, <laughs> that's what you're doing is you're thinking yeah. about how many fucking lockers do I have to build in this base? Yeah, how fast do I have to eat all these fish that I like insta cooked? Am I, I getting any benefit? Like, oh, no, I'm overcapping my, my food bar. <laughs> yeah. Do you play a lot of survival games? Yeah, I play a lot of. Um, Construction crafting type games. Oh, okay. Yeah. Pro- probably due to the year I spent like only playing Minecraft. Minecraft, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I love that genre. Yeah, me too. Um, How are like, you digging the update for Minecraft, by the way? Pretty cool. I've, I mean, I've only played it for one night. I uh, there's copper now. I found a found a crap ton of copper. Mm. Made a little copper roof for my house, and now I look steampunk. <laughs> um, nice. There's stalactites and stalagmites. Okay, wow. And if you fall on them, you take damage, obviously. Yeah. Uh, which makes that a little bit more hazardous. I know there's huh. also now caves with plants growing in them. Haven't found any of those yet. Yeah, the caves sound so much cooler. My friends in Discord also have been like, they launched the server up again because of the update. I still have to go in, but it seems wild. Like, <laughs> really fun down there. And there's new mobs as well, I heard. like. Yeah, there's like goats and polar bears and stuff. Damn. Hmm. I saw a polar bear yesterday. I can't remember those being in the game, so I assume they're new. <laughs> no, it sounds new. It doesn't yeah. sound, yeah, familiar. Yeah. yeah. Um, Whoa. Can you tame those guys and like? I did not get close to it because I have no armor. Yeah. So I can I was, eat you probably. I was <laughs> completely confident that they would kill me, so I did not go near them. But I don't actually know if that's true. Maybe mm. the, maybe they're pushovers. True. Sure, sure, yeah. Sure. Well, um, we've gotten to the point of the show. Yeah. Where the most important the most important part of the show. We're going to guess. 
Video game character heights, folks. <laughs> it is now, we're here, and it's happening. Have you guys prepared? Did you get the material last night with all the results? Oh, yeah, the literature? Yeah, the, the testing, because we're, you guys ready? Uh, I'll, I'll have to be. <laughs> do you, do you want to set this up, like, what the basis, why we're doing video game character heights specifically? Why are we doing video game character heights? I feel like heights at Fanbyte have always been a thing. There's a lot of... Um, Short and tall people at Fanbyte. Yeah, there's the short people and then the tall people. <laughs> so we wanted to just go into video game character heights. I went onto a site that said, okay, these are what we've gotten from like character art and like concept art and also like developers' comments and stuff. So these are the most accurate character heights I could find. Okay. Um, we can just do these pretty quickly. We'll have our video game guest arrive on the couch soon. Um, oh, so they're sitting between us. They're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're going to oh, be yeah. arriving in like, a second. Lo, like, hello. Actually, uh, Master Chief, are you here? Master Oh, perfect. I'm here, Funker. Is I'm here to finish the fight. Whoa, thank you. I'm so happy. I know you just launched Halo Infinite. Yes, I'm very busy right now. I, I know you're busy, but I thank you for joining us. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Of course. Uh, Laura, Steven, how tall do you think Master Chief is? Someone once told me how tall Master Chief Really? Chi I'm pretty sure that this when is like... When did that come up in conversation? Because it's really funny that there's so much Halo lore, you know? That like, That's true. Like, I mean, you know what he's doing in that suit, right? So it's Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, he's like, he's like peeing in his suit, right? Yeah, like, constantly. Yeah, and there's like lore about He never that. stops. Nancy Reagan in there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> brother. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody could hear that, John, but it was very funny, everybody, we swear. Uh, I'm going to guess that Master Chief is like eight and a half feet tall in that suit. Ooh. Ooh. Are we saying with the suit or without the suit? In the suit. In the yeah. suit? Then I think maybe seven foot two. Mm -hmm. He is... Oh, also, just see how he's positioned. He's standing. On the couch. <laughs> <laughs> standing on top. What? Did, how, didn't you notice? <laughs> yeah, well, I, well, you can sit down if you want to. I it's, feel better this way. Okay. You are, Master Chief, you're seven feet tall. Damn, I was close. not far. Yeah, you're pretty close. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Beat poet Master Chief. Okay, Master Chief, please leave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> God, that guy is something else. Come on. What a card, like, a yeah, character. What, what is up with that dude? Constantly cracking wise. <laughs> yeah. Next we have a taller or shorter guess, I can't say. Oh. Sonic the, the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't say. We haven't ruled yet. No, we haven't. <laughs> Oh but, uh, my God. With the Chaos Emerald hair or <laughs> the Chaos Emerald hair? <laughs> Out, like on a bad hair day, he just okay. woke up. Bad blue. hair day. Mm, mm. He has his shoes on. Three foot flat. Ooh, yeah. Ooh that's good. That's I'm tough. thinking. Good answer. I'm thinking the very top of his head is just even with the water and like the shallow end of a swimming pool. <laughs> oh, oh no. Okay. He has to paddle yeah. to stay up. Like, or, or he just stands resolutely on the bottom of the pool and drowns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. He's got really two thought there. Dark sided <laughs> Sonic Laura yeah. here. You've kids been some thought to drowning Sonic before, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> and Stephen, <clears throat> how, how tall do you think our guest is? Here? I probably, I think Laura's probably right, but I need to pick a different number. So I'll say three foot three. Holy shit, it is three foot three. <laughs> so the top of his hair is sticking out of the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got Just one slightly. spike. Okay. Okay, bye, Sonic. I know you have to go somewhere fast. So. You bet. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. <laughs> we, um, we have someone else who's pretty cool. I guess he's big in the industry. Oh, big in the industry? Big. big? Sorry, not a, not a hint. I mean in terms of clout. We have Mario. Wow. Wow, we got Mario? Ooh. I know. We had to get him on. We had to get him yeah. on. People just, I know. We, we just, you, Mario. Hey, it's, hey, hey, everyone calm down. Mario, we'll just, let's make this quick, okay? Mario. <laughs> let's make this quick. Pulls How? out a gun. <laughs> um... Mario, is is Mario here? I believe Mario is with us. Yeah, yeah. Mario. I can see him. Thank you for joining us. I guess Laura, how tall do you think this man is? Okay. Um, 
Everybody in his world is like so messed up, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's really <laughs> hard to find a basis of comparison. Yeah. yeah, New Dog City. There's like humans. Yeah, there are humans. And he's like standing next to them. It's weird. Do you know they, they asked, somebody asked Nintendo about that? Like why is Mario not a human if he's not like these other humans? And they their response was like, there are many types of people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a Hello Kitty ass answer. <laughs> I know. It's like, yeah, Hello Kitty is actually a small British girl inside of a costume. Yeah. Uh, let's say, let's say Mario is three foot eight inches. Oh shit! Okay, three foot eight inches. Wow, that's a, that's almost taller than I would think. I would. I'm gonna go with three and a half. Mm, mm. Three and a half. This is this Mario. Sorry, just also to be clear, it's Super Mario, not little guy. Super Mario. It is. Yeah. He ate uh, one mushroom and is now. This is his height. So you said three foot eight. Yeah. And Steven you said... If it's Super Mario, let's. I'm gonna go. I'll go four and a half. Four and a half. Ooh, y'all are a bit too short. He's five foot one. Five foot He's one. That's that I do not believe John. that. Yeah. I did not believe that. You don't believe it? No, that means all those humans in New Donk City are like seven feet tall. <laughs> yeah, it would mean that. You're right. Right. So the the question wasn't like, is Mario a human? It should be, are those people humans? <laughs> yeah, good question. They might not be. They could not. Well, they're Donk City residents. We don't know where that is. That's true. What yeah. that is really? Donkers, Donkers as Donkers. John is saying. So you said he's he's five foot one. Yeah, five foot one. That's a normal person height. That is a normal. Well, <laughs> this is, this seems to be upsetting you. It's a common <laughs> it's a common height that people have. Yeah. Yes. It does upset me, but I'll I'll commit and move on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Bye, Mario. Finally. Fuck you. Yeah, get, get out, out of here. Of here. <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> um, Nintendo have... will send us codes. <laughs> please, please send us codes. Um, we have someone who everyone loves. Woo! Does it, did anyone bring cheese? Do we have... I mean, there's, that, I got a burrito. This dude eats? I think so. Nikki has asked, is that what this dude eats? So what, what are you eating? Um, Pikachu. Pika P. Pika P. I thought yeah. we were talking about like, would, would you give a mouse a cookie kind of a character? <laughs> a, I don't know what Pikachu eats, but it's probably not cheese. It's not no, cheese, you I don't, don't know. think? It's like, yeah, like that would have to be like Miltank cheese, right? Ugh. Think I don't want to think that. about that industry. I uh, yeah. highly recommend looking up the leaked Pokemon style guide that yeah. came out a couple years ago where they talk about what you are and aren't allowed to show in the world of Pokemon because they do have rules about whether you're allowed to show people eating, eating. Pokemon and Pokemon. Like Wait, what products. is the lore about that? Because I was thinking about eating a Magikarp recently. Yeah, they uh, they like don't eat any meat or whatever in those shows anymore because they don't want to suggest that they're eating a Pokemon or something. But they in the lore things they talk about eating Pokemon all the time. Yeah, I think it's evolved over time. It's evolved. Like over a Pokemon, time. they want us to forget. Yeah, I think oh. they've had like different attitudes towards the content, but the. Like, as, as somebody who works in a field where I have to explain an imaginary world to people a lot of the time, mm -hmm. you know, it's fascinating yeah. to read the Pokemon rules because they are very paranoid about the idea right. that someone will show somebody, like, you know, cutting a steak out of a Pikachu or whatever. <laughs> that that does explain why, the, why, though, that nobody in Ruined King is eating Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it would be very inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> They're not allowed to. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Dude, I have to check out that, that style guide. That yeah. is very fun. Yeah. Um, but how tall is this rat? <laughs> <laughs> it is a rat, right? Like electric rat Pokemon, electric, I think. Electric yeah. mouse. Electric rat. Yeah. 18 We're, inches, rat mouse, foot and a yeah. half. Mm. Mm. It's a little baby. It's a he is a little shoulder. baby. He's so cute. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go with a foot even. Mm. It is... He is one foot three inches. One foot wow. three yeah, inches. Very Dead close. in the middle wow. between yeah. us. <laughs> very good. Very good. You guys are on to this. I feel like I would I would not be able to guess these. Big brains. Thank you, Pikachu. <laughs> <Here we go. laughs> <laughs> now we have someone who I recently met this year, actually. Uh, um, I was playing in her world, uh, fighting aliens, fighting zombie aliens. <laughs> Ellen Ripley. <laughs> Samus Aaron. Samus. Samus Aaron. This with is another suit, yeah, oh, suit yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, suit on. Suit on. That suit's pretty big. Samus has got to be taller than Master Chief, right? Uh, yeah, how, did, how did, did we say Master Chief was? Seven, Seven foot? foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Got to be taller than Master Chief, yeah? Because you got, like, heels. That, that suit has heels on it, more yeah. or less. And, like... 
I don't know. It's, Shoulder it's, pads go up higher than her head. Yeah. Hmm. God. So maybe okay. seven foot two? No, I'm, I'm going to go full, full eight foot. Full eight foot. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to my guns. I'll say seven foot two. Seven foot two. Y'all, I, I wish she was taller, but she's six foot three, apparently. Six foot three. That has to be with the suit off, though. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I, this is from the site. Yeah. But we can say that she's eight foot tall. Yeah, we can I, rewrite history. I think that's coolest. If she's, <laughs> that's, yeah. if she's like walking in your house and like knocking over Smash like the, the, <laughs> the top of your door frame. <laughs> Listen, I've got AO3 open in a tab on my phone right now. We can we can rectify this right and here. say that she's eight feet tall. I feel like she'd walk through that door frame and not care at all. She would just be on her mission oh, yeah. and keep going. Like Leaves a, a Samus shaped indentation. <laughs> yeah, like a like Looney Tune. AO3 tag for <laughs> bigger Samus. Bigger <laughs> Samus. <laughs> Like bigger Luke, bigger Luke, yeah, yeah. Luke, oh. <laughs> Samus. Yeah. That's clone Luke. So this would be clone Samus. He's oh, bigger. that's mm. right. That's right. I always think that bigger Luke and clone Luke are the same thing because I know that. I mean, the, that's one s- explanation. That's one explanation for why Luke is bigger oh, in some scenes. They cloned him and yeah. they added too much. <laughs> they gave him too many like clone juices and he got real big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Samus I, doesn't really talk, so yeah. Thank you. (laughs) We have um, this guy. He just came fresh from getting a haircut. Sephiroth. Here he is, folks. Um, He left the sword at the door, but he's still ready to party. How tall is this guy? This guy? You're making a lot of really tough choices here. I mean, like with the people that you're picking to invite, (laughs) they're all really tall Mm. or really short. Yes. Uh, He's got to be over six, right? Sephiroth has got to be so tall. Like six foot five, like like unnaturally tall, or not like uh, above average tall, above above what you would normally associate with a human being, but like not monstrously tall, not like nine, ten feet. Yeah, isn't. Isn't there like a cutscene at the beginning of the Final Fantasy VII remake where Cloud like hallucinates Sephiroth like looming over him? Totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like there's fire everywhere. Yeah, that's very near the beginning. Yeah. And he's, he's very Sephiroth. tall in that. Was was Cloud's head like even with Sephiroth's pecs, or was it <laughs> even with like his chin? I don't remember. I don't remember. I, th- I would say it was probably with the chin. Yeah. Because I think he's taller than Cloud, but also he flies a lot, so it's tough to tell. <laughs> He's got that one wing, you know? Yeah. Um, let's six. say six foot eight. I was literally going to say six foot eight. We can team up on this yeah, one if let's you team want. Up. Lock yeah. it in. He's six foot three. Six <laughs> Why is yeah. everybody six foot? Wow, okay. They're, they're, they're shorter. They're shorter than you would think. Oh, no, he's six foot one. Sorry. What? Wait, what? What? Wow. I mean, he's just a guy. Yeah, Dude. but he's yeah, like but a he's big a guy. Really scary guy. <laughs> he's a scary guy. But the sword, I think, is super long. So we're yeah, like, yeah, maybe it influences your opinion. Yeah. yeah. Do you I think th- the sword is taller than him? Absolutely. Absolutely, it is. Yeah. yeah, I think the sword is like probably way taller. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know how you even carry that. Like that seems. Like yeah, where are you gonna? Where are you sheathing that? You you turn like Sephiroth turns to leave a room and just like knocks books off shelves yeah, every time. Shit. It's just like not inviting oh, that guy over. Ever. Yeah. Bye, actually. You should leave. The sword's over there. <laughs> <laughs> is that how he says bye? Michael McDonald. Zephyroth <laughs> <laughs> is here again. Um, He's gonna stab that girl in the dress. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're gonna do a rapid fire round. We have a few left. Um, I'm going to. I'm gonna read out Fox McCloud. Oh. You just drop down. Five foot one. That's some that's some Mario stuff. Damn, you were like on that immediately. This is a rapid fire round. Oh, mm. rapid fire. Oh, uh, 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 four foot eight. Mm. Four foot nine inches. Oh my god, yeah. you're so good at this. Oh. No, you were both very close. Both yeah, very, very we close. Yeah, we were both you're, very close. You're beating me on like all of these though. No, <laughs> oh, yeah. We went in together on the Sephiroth though. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's good work out here all around. Um, bye, Fox. Bye. Waka, Final waka, waka, destination. Waka, waka, no items. Waka 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 waka. Pac Man has joined us. How tall is he? Three foot. One foot. One foot. Four foot two. 
Fuck that's off. That's disgusting. I, I hate that. <laughs> this is Un- Pac-Man with, I think, legs and arms. Yeah, this is like, like not the, sh- just the, that's not real. That's not Pac-Man. That's, not that's bigger Pac-Man. That's that, that is the clone. Yeah. <laughs> this is when he's going on adventures and stuff, and he's going, he's walking around, he's doing his thing. Imagine an orb that's like four foot high opening its mouth. To oh, yeah. God. To eat your life. Not just to eat you. Like, you just found out that there's life after death. Your grandmother, her ghost came to speak to you for the first time, and then a four foot tall orb opens its mouth and then swallows your grandmother's ethereal soul in front of really you. That would be really bad. God. Yeah, Pac-Man, don't do that anymore, please. Waka waka. Bye. Um, we got him. He's he busted up the whole hotel lobby, but it's okay. We still <laughs> brought him up. Crash Bandicoot. Whoa. Hey, how tall is this guy? I don't know, like two foot. I never played any of those games. Uh, he's a Bandicoot. Four yeah, foot nine. He's uh, four foot eleven. Wow. wow. Pretty God. tall. I mean, he's like built. Wow. Isn't he like a little rat, though? <laughs> that's, that's Nat- Natalie Flores is as tall it's as Crash, Crash Bandicoot. Bandicoot. You heard it here first, folks. Um, <laughs> he's spinning off stage. Bye, Crash. <laughs> Last but not least, um, Vault Boy from Fallout. Oh, Vault Boy. Well, are we talking about... He's mm-hmm. a bobblehead, right? He's a toy? Yeah. They're, they're in... Three inches. Mm. But they're they're also in, <laughs> in the Fallout Shelter. Oh, in Fallout Shelter, they're little they're little people. They're yeah. little people, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that version. Okay. Sure. Okay. Okay. Not a bobblehead. No. Okay. Well, then I'm gonna guess five five or whatever is closest to the average human height. Mm. Yeah, that's a good one. I'll go five six. Wait, actually, to... it is closer to the bobblehead. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> five inches. Mm. Steven. S- four inches. Thirteen inches. What? Those are yeah. huge. That's, yeah, they're pretty big. Those are expensive toys, then. Yeah, I don't they, know. That's not how big they are in the video game Fallout. Uh, okay. If you get them, that's what they're in. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've got this from very legitimate sources. The, the, the height resource of video games. Right, Thank right, you, right. the Society of Health and Height. Mm-hmm. Um, Society so, of Health and Height. <laughs> that's, that's where we got it from. Um, thank you, Vault Boy. See you never. Um, and thank you, Laura, Mache, and thank you for Steven having me. Strum for thank joining you. me on this journey and talking to me about Rune King and League of Legends. This is so fun. Yeah. This is very, very fun. It's wonderful. Um, it's nice to see you again after way too long. Yeah, I'm, I'm mm. uh, very impressed and proud of all that you folks have made since I uh, <laughs> dipped out to go do other things. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, it's, it's super cool. Yeah. You guys have been able to build. And you have also been working on some really cool stuff that we've enjoyed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, thank thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much for joining us and like making the time. It really means a lot. Um, do you have anything you want to plug or tell the people about? I don't know. <laughs> play, play Rune King. Those people are all ripped and super cool. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Yeah. They are very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Steven, do you have anything you want to let the people know? Yeah. Um... The palm trees out there are not natural. They don't just naturally occur in Los Angeles. They're just like they were brought here by other people and transplanted to make it look more like exotic or something. It's weird, isn't it? It works, though. Like, I, I was looking around. And I was like, it looks like the islands. It feels like the islands. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so you did it. say that yesterday. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it caught me. Um, I do not have much to say, but thank you for watching. We are going to be streaming throughout the day with more special guests, so stay tuned. We're going to be staying live as well. So... The Fancy's Live will be back very, very soon. Bye. Bye. Stay here.